Hello, and welcome back to Learning with Lee. In this episode, we're going to continue our discussion of expressions, operators, and variables by discussing Boolean expressions and variables. Booleans are another primitive data type that we haven't particularly covered. And what you can do with a Boolean, first let me tell you how you declare it. Boolean is represented by the bool type. And the bool type has two values, either true or false. So I can say bool b equals true, or I could say bool b equals false. Those are the two and the only real two ways of declaring it. You can say something such as b equals i, and what this does is it converts an integer into a boolean implicitly. And the way in which that is done is that if i is 0, it is false. If i is not 0, it is true. What you use booleans for, we'll get into in a future episode on flow control and loops. However, what we're going to focus on is the different ways in which you can interact with Boolean variables. In order to do that, I've created these four Boolean variables here, the first two true, the second two false. So as we can take a look at some of the combinations of bools and how the different operators allow you to combine them to generate output. So let's just copy this line. One of the things that you're going to actually have to do here is that if I do something such as this, which is a Boolean operator saying that I want to return true if A and B are both true, and false if either of them is false. So just to sort of make this clear as to how this works is that if I do something like that, or that, or I can even do something like this, similar to an addition operator, is commutative, so I can do it in either of those forms and the output will be the same. As such, the output here is ones and zeros because, as I said, in case it happens to be, say, converting from an int, any non-zero happens to be true, and any zero is false. In this case here, c is false, so not both a and c are true, meaning that this is going to return false. And in this case here, once again, it has c in it, even though a and b are both true. So basically, you'll go, okay, this is true. So I have one effectively temporary Boolean in memory that's the output of this operation that says true, then I'm going to combine that via the AND operation with this variable C, which is false, and since not both of those are true, it will return false. Alternatively, I could care if only one of these variables happens to be true. And if I only care if one variable is true, use what is known as a pipe, and more accurately use these double pipes. And we'll get into what pipes can be used for, in case you only do a single pipe, as well as what they can be used for, for interacting between multiple programs, because they have a couple of different uses. But in the context of C and C++, the primary use you're going to use them for is this here. As you can see in the output, all of our outputs are true, even though in the previous one, only this first output here was true. And that's because in each of these cases, one of the variables is true. Let's say that I care if something, let's say, for simplification, change these so that now these are attributes of something else. I've converted these into general things about me. Am I a human? Yes. Am I male? Yes. Well, you might not have guessed that from my, you know, sexy and feminine voice, but contrary to popular belief, I am indeed a male. I am not an alien, nor am I a dog. So just for simplicity's sake, so let's say that I care about, is this person not a human? So what you do then is you go, exclamation point before a Boolean variable like this acts similarly to how the negation operator acts on an integer. So in one case, it happens to negate the sign of it. In this case here, it negates truth of this one here. So in this case here, what's going to output is if is human is true, it's going to output false. If I, for whatever reason, say that I'm not a human and check it, it's going to say that, yep, Lee is not a human. That happens to be a relatively easy way of doing that and that can then be used in conjunction with some of the other stuff that we've been doing earlier. Let's go back to the general idea that I had before of, let's say, is a human and is not a dog. In this case here, it'll return true because dog is false, gets converted to true, then compares, adds them together, and sees that both of them are true, so it will return true from here. The next thing you can do is you can also compare whether or not things are the case. Let's say that you end up having something that rather than does this, let's say that is dog equals is not is human. You can do something like that, and then you can go, are these two the same? So you can just check that if you're a human, you are not a dog. So this basically just says, is what's on this side equal to what's on this side? And the major difference is that this 
does an assignment. It does not do a comparison. It does not say this one here, is it equal to this one? This one here is what does that. This one here says store what's on this side in this one. The double equal sign is for comparisons. I've added in these ints and slightly modified our Boolean collection in order to take a look now at what we can do in terms of comparing integers, as well as you can do the same thing with floats and doubles and any other type that really can be converted into a number. What we're looking at here is the less than and the greater than operator. And as you might also guess, there's also a less than or equal to, but as you obviously can't sort of draw the little line that goes below either of these, what you do is you put the less than or greater than sign first, and then you include an equal sign after it. And that works fairly predictably. And even though there's an equal sign on this side, it's important to remember this operator will take place before this operator will. So you don't technically need parentheses over here. If you want to, you can include them. It doesn't hurt anything, but in this case here, you're just saying is A less than or equal to C, and in this case here is B greater than C. So there's also one other thing that I sort of skipped over showing you, and that was that let's say I wanted to know that D and E are not equal, and I wanted to check for that. I could already do something similar to that with doing that, surrounding this with parentheses in order to ensure that, that takes place first, and then negate the result of that operation. However, because this is a common enough occurrence, C and C++ and other programming languages allow you to do stuff like that, in which you go is not equal to. We need the parentheses around here because of the fact that this operator takes higher precedence than this operator, but that's what that little error was, and that's why it went away when I added in the parentheses. However, in this case here, we have this nice simple version so as I don't have to go, okay, this one here, toss the negation outside of it. It's only one character in this case, but it can help to clean up your code a lot when we start getting into more complicated logic statements and more complex things that you will be doing with Booleans. So I'm going to finish off this episode by showing you a bit of a complicated operator, but one that is really useful for a lot of the coding that you'll probably end up doing, and it's known as a ternary operator. So far we've shown unary operators, so things such as in case I want to negate E here. It's a unary operator because it operates on a single element. In this case here, the not equals, as well as also the greater than and less than or equal to are binary operators because they take in two operands. Now, this is a ternary operator, so it takes in three operands and technically has two different symbols that represent the operation. And the way in which it's done is by the question mark and a colon. And what it says is it goes, okay, here on this side is some Boolean. We'll just use E for this case here. So if E is true, perform this operation here. So let's just say that I want to return A. And if it is false, I want it to return B. Or let's say that in this case here, because I'm looking for effectively the minimum of B and C, let's say that if I want E to be true, I'll return B. And if I want E to be false, I'll return C. And that way there, you get the smaller of those two values out of here, no matter what. So I can do something such as int F, is equal to that, and we can see out, and I can output the minimum of B and C just by going, okay, do that, and then toss on the end L. And really, if I want to, I don't even need to have this assigned to a variable here. In practical purpose, it actually helps to have it up here rather than down in here, because once we get into debugging, it'll allow you to set a breakpoint at this line here, and it'll allow you to basically see what F is before it outputs it and allow you to analyze in case any errors go wrong in this logic. So basically that means to return the maximum value of B and C because E will be true if B is greater than C and it'll be false if C is greater than B. And in case E is false, C is the larger number. In case E is true, B is the larger number. And as you can imagine, this can be used for a whole bunch of different operations and we'll get into some of the specific uses of that in the future. For now, I'm going to leave our discussion of Boolean variables here. I will probably in the future release a couple episodes on the different laws of Boolean mathematics and the different properties of Boolean math. However, enough of it is stuff that you can, I think, figure out. So I would recommend spending 10, 15 minutes messing around with Booleans, messing around with the different operators I showed you today, seeing how the different combinations end up working try combining four or five Booleans, and then seeing what sort of patterns emerge. Really, that should be enough for you to take a look at tonight. So have a wonderful day. I will see you all next time.